All right. So uh, I must tell you that this session is being recorded, and uh, with these recordings will be available to you later at a later point for you to access. So many, many, many more participants. So once again, welcome you all to our summer patchala, and uh, the four sessions are here right in front of you. And we are going to begin today with our virtual classroom. That's your world window. We are going looking at transforming your classroom via Skype. Um, just about a brief introduction of who we are. I'm Minakshi Oberoi and I'm a MI fellow and a master trainer and also I am the founding director of the Pedagogics. With me today moderating the session is Jyoti Chaba. She's a MI expert and a co-founder of the Pedagogics and her eye is totally on the window, chat window. She's going to note down all your comments, questions, anything that you want to say, please her eye is over there, so is mine, but she's the one who will basically be responding to you, who will be posing to you many questions during the conversation and uh, will be saying a hi to you in just a minute. Hi everyone, good evening, good afternoon, so good to have you all here, we are really excited for this part Shala, so really looking forward to your active participation, not passive, so please go ahead and Manakshi, let's go ahead, thank you so much for joining in. Awesome, so uh, let me start by saying that when an approach to learning and teaching earns a nickname or two, that's often a sign that approach has worn out or been, I mean it's not no welcome anymore so it is replaced with a more relevant method so not to say that what we are doing in the class is not relevant anymore there that's definitely very relevant but there are many approaches here wherein relevance has found a new meaning uh, such in the case of like uh, sit and get or sage in the stage the teaching method that trains students to their seats and puts teacher in front and center is a lecture format but those days are on their way out, replacing this approach, which is actually active learning. So imagine taking your class on an around the world trip or field trip or having your favorite children's author lead today's read aloud. But you can do the, both of these and more without leaving your classroom. And thanks to Skype for that. It's a great use of technology in the classroom. Skype in the classroom is an online community that enables thousands of teachers to inspire the next generation of global citizens through transformative learning over Skype. I'm going to share with you some ideas to spark your next lesson and give your students something to look forward to and give you something to look forward to towards the other side of the summer break. Um, let me pause here to break the word Skype for you. Well, Skype is basically derived from sky and peer. Skype is a service that allows users to connect via video or chat windows or instant messaging. Intended for all audiences, whether it's students, teachers, friends, family members, or businesses, etc. Um, Skype in the Classroom is a website on which teachers worldwide can post for Skype lessons, connect with other classrooms, and come up with ways to collaborate using Skype. This is a free a communication software that allows you to make calls, instant message, and video conference online. I'm going to share with you some endless possibilities. Actually, it's not possible for me to share with you in just a one hour session the possibilities because the possibilities are actually endless for using this edtech tool in the classroom. Skype gives students and teachers the ability to connect with the outside world without really leaving their classroom, allowing them to meet face to face with subjects of their learning and with students from other cultures. Teachers across the world, well, many sitting in this room too, well right now I can name many teachers over here whose name are very familiar to me and I can tell you that they've already been through these programs and they have already arranged and enlightened many, many classrooms. There are many unforgettable experiences that they have created. I will be sharing some of those their experiences with you all where they have demonstrated some extraordinary potential of Skype in the classroom. Um, how popular is it? Well, the figures are in front of you. 
the Skype in the classroom, we have about 16,448 educators who have already signed up. 888 collaborative projects created. Well, in fact, these figures are just about not even symbolic because these numbers increase by the minute. And we, we it, 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 it is very difficult to keep track of how much, who is doing, where in the world are they using it because not everyone reports and not everyone uses this very site where from where our statistics are picked up. So basically, why should we use Skype in the classroom? Well, Skype in the classroom, definitely one, it is free and it can be used from cell phones or iPads or any of the tablets in addition to your computers. Uh, it controls the privacy settings to make it safe for students to use. Well, while you uh, have been sent a link to join this call, this call is being made using Skype for Business. So no outsider without a link will be able to come into this call if I do not want them to. Therefore, the privacy settings are in my hands. Ability to record voice or video and to rebroadcast later. Well, that's exactly what's happening right now. You're being recorded. So all you say, all you hear, all you see is being recorded. And this is actually particularly useful for students who are absent or, you know, not really in a mood to listen to us or hear me out. So those people can actually uh, you know, look at this or revisit this through the rebroadcast. Well, it also gives you the ability to communicate with people across the world. That's the comfort of your own classroom. Allows educators to connect with other educators, professionals, parents, parents too, and allows students to connect with guest speakers and their peers. Well, we're going to talk about all of this in detail as we move on. I want you to view something and let me make this work for you because a lot of talking can also be a little disruptive. So I'm going to play this video for you. View it. The purpose of Skype, simply put, is to bring people together. This is the power of video. It's a window into the human side uh, of all of us. It gives you a platform, it gives you an ability to affect, I mean, hundreds of millions of people. We are truly, truly fortunate this morning to be able to be making a Skype call to speak with a Kenyan naturalist who is working with nobility in school. Are you ready? Hi, can you hear me now? Yes, yes. yes. sort of a grassroots beginning. You notice the teachers talking about how they use Skype as a way of actually thinking about education. I've been teaching for a long time. And to me, school has never been about what goes on within four walls. It's always, you know, how can we knock the walls of the school down? There's nothing that compares to being able to actually meet students and teachers and experts from someplace else in the world. One of the most inspiring stories is actually, actually a school in Austin. It's actually, it's quite a brown ridden place. They started working with a school in Kenya. Of course, the school in Kenya is experts in this area. What we've been doing is big hunting, and we came up with a group harvesting so that they can harvest the main work by doing the lazy. So that's cool. Watching my students experience this was one of the most incredible moments for me as a teacher. You can see them, you can see their facial expressions, and them smiling and they talk. It's just like, oh my gosh, the kids in Kenya are just like we are. After an experience like today, it's hard not to just think, wow, there are people out there who really want to better the world and are working for it. We can actually do something. We took it to the next level and said, couldn't we help bring resources projects together. It could be language teachers, for example, subject matter experts, but also things like co-teaching. To have a platform like this where we can sign up and create a circle of learning, for me as a teacher, I can't ask for anything more. There's a sort of theme that emerged, which is much bigger than just bringing people together. It was sort of breaking down our entire time zones, sort of cultural barriers, to be shrinking them down. That's why these one day is so powerful. We just support Skype. We create a global education resource with focus on peace and And Skype is the best way of reaching out to young people around the world. The thing that's most important about this is how you educate people in general about peace. Well, it turns out, especially with kids that they're very open, you know, we could actually start to change the, the way people think about different cultures and that way you are. It's amazing just how many people use 
describe in different ways, and one of the greatest ones, I think, is what we did with the group at the UN that's focused on refugee camps. The UN had come to us to say, could we build up solutions specifically for the aid workers? I think it really helps them have a sense of, of home, a sense of sort of being together when they're so far apart. This is the first time I, I, I was in Yemen, and that was the first time I saw my son walking. That, for me, is always in my heart and my head. I will never forget. I think the thing that's really unique though about Skype is that it's sort of the tip of the iceberg of what you could do. You see it playing out in all sorts of ways in the medical industry, education. Actually, you could think about reuniting uh, refugees themselves. And we have to be in the world of a hand. We have to be uh, a profitable and well-run you know, organization. And it has to give back. Just for us to play the school part in affecting maybe a few people's lives and then affects thousands of other people's lives. To me, we could achieve that. We could really achieve the goal of Sky. Awesome. Well, this video on Skype in the Classroom is very typical of the benefits you get from the programs like you saw, but this is actually only the tip of the iceberg. At one point, the teachers say that for her, school has never been about hap what happens in the four walls of the classroom. It is about you can knock those walls down and connect to them outside. The reactions of the students that are involved in the call are totally, totally priceless. I'll pause here just to accommodate a few disturbances. I can see in the chat window that many of you have not been able to view or hear the video very properly. I must inform you that since we are using different bandwidths, your bandwidth might have some issues or connectivity problems might hinder that, but not to worry. Like I said, recording of this session will be available and you will be able to view this session at a later stage too. So, what is Skype in the classroom? Let me show you four big ways, four main ways in which you can bring the classroom wall to your classroom. Skype in the classroom is an online community of teachers, educators around the world who use Skype video conferences. Why do they use it? Well, they use it to teach students geography, social studies, history, and even languages with Mystery Skype. Not sure how many of you have heard of it, but Mystery Skype is another big big way in which the Skype is being used across the globe. Or take your class around the world with the virtual field trips. Invite a guest speaker to add excitement, an exciting expert point of view into your lessons and connect with other classrooms to work collaboratively on global projects. What follows is details. What follows is what all can you do? What follows is first and first foremost, how do you access this? Well, yes, how do you access this? And I'm very happy to read the window where people say that this is an excellent way of learning. And Jasprita said, yes, definitely, this is what we want in our classroom. So, yes, this is exactly what you want, Harmeet and Jasprita. Okay. Um, this is another one. Do you remember that in your school times you used to have pen pals? Well, those pen pals can now actually be met online. Well, the goal isn't to collect cold data of, you know, yes, hi, how are you, but to make connections between different locations and communities and to continuously become better at asking questions and learning. And that questions don't stop at the end of a lesson day or a Skype call. These are bonds that would be made. It's super easy to connect. Well, it's just a link that you need. No Skype account is required, just like all of you have experienced it today, that we send you a link and you're here joining us for this session. That's how super easy it is. Coming to where you can access it. Um, again, I would want you to speak to me. Tell me if you've been able to make an account, that is, if you have an Outlook account or Hotmail account, Give me a thumbs up if you do. Give me a thumbs down if you don't. So if you know where the chat sign is, click on it to access the chat window and give me a thumbs up. Till then, let me create a poll for you.
Awesome. So, I see that most of you have an account, which is an Outlook or a Hotmail account. If you have that, we had requested you to go on to the education.microsoft.com. If you have been able to, wow, if you've been able to create an account, I needed a yes, and here I have, I'm getting a yes or a no. Um, even if it's a no, it's not a problem because we are there to get you over there. So if now, almost at the end of it, I can see that 86% of you already have created your profile on uh, the network and about 14% say that you are yet to do that. All right. Poll will stay open and I'm going to go back. Okay, I'm going to close the poll now and I'm going to take you back to presenting. So great. So if you have, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to share the screen because so many of you do not have it. I'm going to actually share my desktop, take you to the website to show you how to access. But this page, um, you can see right now my page on the screen, the education.microsoft.com page. And what you see here is the, uh, the, in the interface right now is the introductory page. That's the page that you land on. And you see this sign in icon, you sign in over here, it will prompt you to create a, a sign in and when you sign in, please be extremely careful that you are signing in using your Microsoft sign in, that is your Outlook or Hotmail sign in. In case you do have an Office 365 sign in, use that only then. Otherwise, just sign in with your Microsoft account. Now, because this uh, browser is familiar, so you may use any of those browsers to uh, access this. So my browser is very familiar with my sign in. Therefore, it will automatically sign me in and there you see me over there. Let me take you through this interface. This is our radio zone. And this is my to-go place, everyday to-go place. Uh, because look at the kind of things that you can do over here. You, know, you can get trained, you can find a lesson plan, every teacher's best friend place. Okay, and then you can connect with others, you can follow some educators, you can find experts, you can share your expertise. All of you are experts in your own areas. That's why you're leading those classes. So please do go ahead and share your expertise. Earn badges. Who doesn't like badges? Who doesn't like earning badges? And after some time, well, MIs in this room know that it almost becomes almost kind of a competition, but a friendly and a very healthy one there. That's who's earned how many. And I must tell you at this breath, I'll, I'll leak out a secret. There are two people in this room I know of. Uh, not sure if the third one is here, but I know that Pooja has almost completed her all her courses and Jyoti is not far behind with about 18 Jyoti mm. yeah so 18 badges is what she's earned so you've got a hard competition there better get going after this session and last of all is our Skype in the classroom if I click on this Skype in the classroom it will take me directly to the page where Skype all my options for Skype in the classroom sit I can actually see that a number of people are actually, okay, it's not visible. So what I'm going to do, oh, Champa, you've got 17. Jyoti, someone is right behind you. <laughs> wow, that's how we talk, actually. So great, awesome. Pooja, 24. Okay, people are giving their figures there. So better keep an eye. And I'm going to go back to presenting and sharing with you what I was sharing. And I might have to skip a few slides to do that because my presentations. Okay, it'll take about a moment. Oh, great. So, yeah. So, Sonia, what's your figure? So, there are many, many, many people with large figures, large numbers over there. And, uh, yeah, Rupa's in love with the numbers that Pooja has. Rupa, that's your challenge now to pick up those numbers. Not bad, Sonia. That's a 10. At least that's more than mine. So, yeah, that's the kind of competition that we get in. It's very healthy. We push each other. We tell each other to do more, to be more. Coming back to Skype for this, uh, Skype in the classroom. Uh, while we were talking, number one is teach your students geography, social sciences, history, and even languages on Mystery Skype. Skip a few slides to take you there.
it here we are I've shown you this on the screen so that's the registration page that comes for you so you need to register yourself give your basic details out over there and I, this slide I've created specially to tell you that you know normally we get stuck on the time the time zone that we run in is G, uh, GMT plus 530 Chennai Mumbai and New Delhi India so that's the time frame that we are looking at and once you're in you're ready to explore Skype in the classroom Next question, how to access this Skype in the classroom? Once you click on Skype in the classroom, these are your options. You can play a mystery Skype, you could be a guest, talk to a guest speaker, or you could take a virtual field trip. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take you into a dizzy because I'm going to start the reverse. I'm going to talk about taking a virtual field trip. Once you click on taking a virtual field trip, these are your options. You could find a virtual field trip, you could see a virtual field trip in action, or you could even host a virtual field trip. With the kind of diversity of places that all of us sit in, all of us are actually very capable of even hosting virtual field trips. So field trips are actually extremely important for our classes because the world is an oyster. Take your students 60 feet underwater to the world's only underground aquarium. Travel to Africa to see South Africa's penguins. Learn about sustainable gardening through a trip to Kenyan teaching farms and much, much more. Virtual field trips is a great way to get the applied benefits of field trip without the cost, time, hassle and the geographical restrictions. Imagine a day in the dangerous space called space. Connect your students to a space station where astronauts live, are live. They're going to talk to you and work with you, with your students. Let's talk about the universe. Have you ever thought of the Boston Tea Party Museum actually coming alive into your classroom? Well, we talk about the Boston Tea Party with our students about when we are talking about the American Revolution. But have you revolutionized the way we can make them experience using Skype? I'm going to show you many, many examples of what I'm going to talk about. Well, animals, believe it or not, animals are the most important Skype guest. The safari is broadcast live twice daily for three hours each through Wild Earth TV. What a way to learn with animals in Africa. Skype with a family living in a farm in New Zealand. Tundra connections live broadcast during the polar migrations. Elephants in a Thailand come into your classroom. Well, imagine learning by doing is best, but experiencing something live is a great alternative. Isn't that fun? Absolutely good fun. Well, all of us study about animals, and here are some more options for you which you can do. What Skype in the classroom also does is on the education.microsoft.com website, you will find a new focus every month. These, right now, the current focus is World Ocean. Well, 8 June was the World Ocean Day. Actually, we are sitting and talking on the World Ocean Day. Today, many, many, many classrooms are connecting to various places, some of which I brought down here for you to see how they are going to experience and have fun in the ocean. Well, not the beaches or the sand, but not bad if you could even see or experience even, a, I think, a bit of it. I would consider myself on a holiday if I were doing that, but learning on my holiday. Thus, there are many, many, many virtual trips that you can take with your students. Take them on a world which they wish to see, which they want to see, but have not been able to visit as of now. Um, let me ask you a question there. I challenge you to tell me a dream place for your students, well, mind you, for your students, for making that virtual field trip. So in the chat window, just give me a place that your students would, you would like your students to travel, where they would, you would like to take them on a virtual field trip. I'm going to give it about five seconds for you to type. So on your marks, get set, go. Mm 
Microsoft's head office. Wow. Awesome. What fabulous responses. Mars. Pramila, I like your response. Uh, as far as the promises go, well, I would say go visit the website and I'm sure you'll be flooded, flooded, believe you me, with more, more, more options. Thus, virtual field trips are basically, they're going to be an extension in your class. Teachers can browse, schedule a virtual field trip for their class in any number of locations. And this is an amazing opportunity for broadening the horizons of your students and can include different habitats, careers, countries. So it's a, it has a lot of curricular ties. Um, check with the museums, historical attractions, and other locations to see if they have some someone on site who would be able to or willing to conduct a virtual tour for your class. If you can't find an employee at a specific location, solicit the help of a friend who may be traveling. Why not tell your friends traveling this vacation to make you visit many, many rooms, It'll help you take a virtual field trip. So set up a schedule and have them Skype in it to share the sites as they go along. Moving on to our next choice, yes, excellent, excellent choices out over there. So moving on to the next option that you have with Skype in the classroom, it's the guest speakers. Who are the guest speakers? Why are they here and why should we call them? And what all do we do? Well, that's the landing page for guest speakers. So on the first page when you saw we said find a guest speaker, you click over there and you come here. So these are your three options. Find a guest speaker, see a guest speaker in action or become a guest speaker. Well, that would have actually opened up a few eyes. I know eyes widened. Yes, you can become a guest speaker. Like I said, you can share your expertise with the world. So you could apply to become a guest speaker. We've had some sessions in the past where we've invited computer scientists to speak to our students. We've had discussions about import and export from food from New Zealand. We've had people visiting on expedition to our own very Mount Everest, and people have actually sat down over there with my uh, with the Mira Peak expedition, who spoke to our children in our classrooms. World is our classroom in session with the students from Pakistan is what we did last year. Authentic audience and valuable insights. Can you even guess what this child said? <laughs> the child from Pakistan told me, you look just like us. Well, yes, right, sitting right across that border, they don't even know that we look alike, we talk alike, we feel alike. So, yeah, so give them exposures, call them into your classroom, let them talk. Create immersive classrooms. Here, what you see in this picture is a guest speaker who has been invited for professional learning purposes. She's presenting to audience of teachers. So professional learning, this, is, this can also be used as a professional learning platform. Most importantly, what's going on these days is invite the Microsoft Teams to your classroom. So there you go, all of you who have written over there, who want to go to the Microsoft office or who want to meet Microsoft people, here's an option for you. Invite a computer scientist to speak to your students while Skype in the classroom. Anyone who followed the R of the code closely, um, I would actually know what we are talking about by saying invite the guest speakers into your classroom. They have smart, passionate, engaging, tech industry professionals who would love to talk to your class about their jobs, whether their careers, uh, education, what did it lead to, what brought them here, what's their passion, how to pursue this. I know our students have so many questions, so go ahead and connect to these Microsofties. Here are many more options in the past that have happened. You can bring in not only animals, but animal experts into your class. Talk about sensitive issues like learning about the fur trade or lunch. So why not? <coughs> Take them to Antarctica. Uh, Mark would actually travel to Antarctica and we connected with him and he spoke to us from there, giving us information about who, what and what all exists over there. So guest speaker is another option. And I'm going to pause here to catch a breath and Jyoti. Yeah, hi. hi everyone. I just wanted to share my experience as a guest speaker. I had a session with Australia. Just a second.
Okay. Sorry, there was some noise problem, so I'll say again. I had a wonderful experience being a guest speaker uh, with children in Australia. I connected with a school in Victoria near Melbourne, and the grade five children, we had session on, you know, I spoke about how we are facing water challenge in Gurgaon and uh, many parts of India. So for them, it was really, really very strange. You know, they couldn't think of something like this happening in some part of the world. For, some, for them, it was like an eye opener. Like, oh, really? Something like this happens in some part of the world that people don't have water. But yes, that's the kind of, you know, they got the insight from talking to me. So I, and I showed them some posters about how, how we talk about saving water in different ways and how, you know, we are trying to harvest some rainwater harvesting we are trying to do here. So it was a very engaging session for them. And they, you know, they wrote a story about how different places in Asia are facing water challenge. So that's the kind of experience we can give to other kids or we can have our kids get that kind of experience from calling other guest speakers in the classrooms. So whether you're teaching your students chemistry, computer science or literature, you can bring lessons to life by accessing hundreds of guest speakers such as authors, TED speakers, biologists, researchers, developers and more. Accessing guest speakers through Skype in the classroom is a great way to give students a real life interactive glimpse at a variety of career options. Well, let me give you a tip there. Get your students to guess a speaker's job in mystery career. If you are interested in teaching your students more about coding, through our partnership with R of Code, you can bring a computer science career to life by inviting computer scientists to speak to your students. There is so much more that you can do with guest speakers and I'm going to talk to you about this as we move along because what's coming up next is the hot favorite of all teachers and students. That's called Mystery Skype. Well, the global guessing game and gets, that gets the kids learning with Skype. Sign in to join the Mystery Skype community. If you want to take part, you only have to have your willingness with you to take part. Of course, Mystery Skype is as popular as ever. It takes the power of a simple video conferencing call and gamifies it. Teachers can connect via Skype in the Skype education portal and play their class against each other in a bid to try and guess the location of the other class. So I'll tell you what happens is actually, let me show you first a mystery Skype in action. For those of you who cannot access the video, I am extremely apologetic about it. But I think what we are going to do is we are going to make this available to you at a later end because when you will be able to view it. Uh, let me just play it for you by sharing my screen. So what we're going to do is, the bandwidth is not going to allow us right now, I think, to do that. So I'm going to uh, move on with, continue actually presenting my PowerPoint and I'm going to show you this at a later stage. While we are getting that uh, loaded. Let me talk to you about what happens in a ministry Skype. It's basically there are about two teams, that is two classrooms that connect with each other. They have a set of about 20 questions that they ask each other. And within those 20 questions, the students are supposed to guess what is going on and where the other classroom is. Well, it's, it's, it's pretty challenging. It's not that easy. It's not as easy as it sounds might be, but it is as interesting as it might sound to you right now. Um, I'm not sure if you use Mystery Skype, so if you have used Mystery Skype in the past, give me a thumbs up in the window and I'll know how many of you are familiar so that I can explain you only as much details as you want. Okay. Mm -hmm. Most 
most of you are aware. So let me show you that this is the landing page of Microsoft, uh, education.microsoft.com and uh, this is the landing page of Mystery Skype where you can play Mystery Skype. You could find a classroom to play with. You could prepare your classroom and see a Mystery Skype in action. As you can see on the screen that you have your option to filter by age group, by subject, by country, by language. So you may choose to be with another country as you wish to. What does it do to you? Well, it just teaches you without wall. You can see within one room there are inquirers. In today's meet, you can see children in gross. They are hooked to learning. There are children who are sitting with atlases, plotting and mapping where the other country could be. There's logical reasoning happening. Why this place is here? Why these people look like? So obviously, when you're looking at someone, your first guess is that maybe I, I'll know where it is. Then there are runners around the class. There are speakers. There are clue keepers. And there are photographers. And of course, there are question keepers. So this is all tracked. Here what you see is a mystery Skype in action between Malaysia and our students from India. And I think Vanita signed in if this is her classroom. So um, this is Amani's classroom too So uh, in Malaysia. So what, what you can see is basically children in conversation, children connecting to, with each other. They're communicating. Everybody has a job in the room. Nobody is sitting idle and just listening or looking at the screen. So it's a very, very active form of learning. It's a wonderful tool to teach the 21st century skills of critical thinking, collaboration, geography, teamwork, cultural awareness, deductive reasoning, and digital literacy. Whenever I talk about these things, people actually come back to us asking for lesson plans. What is a teacher without a lesson plan? Well, yes. Lesson plans are available to you. In fact, the curriculum, there is a whole curriculum around Mystery Skype, which is available to you free or anyone who wants to use Mystery Skype in the class. All you need is to access that. You need to have a Microsoft account, of course, to sign in. And the Microsoft accounts are free and you've already made one, either a Hotmail or an Outlook one. So what you have to do is you have to go and access. If you have seen the landing page carefully, the last option says, or the middle option says that access your OneNote notebook or your lesson plan. The curriculum is in the form of a OneNote notebook. Most of you are already familiar. Those who are not, wait for the next session. It will be you very, very familiar with it. So the curriculum is in form of a OneNote notebook. And um, the notebook is divided into five sections. It's basically each section tells you more about the best ways in which teachers can use Mystery Skype in the classroom. There's a welcome page, which actually says that just one second. Jyoti, I think someone in the room needs help and they've just pressed in help button. If you could please share. Thank you. Mm. Okay, so there's a welcome page which tells you how to play, why to play, and how to get started. Then the second section is on documenting your adventures. The third one has teacher's resources. Fourth one has student resources. And the fifth one tells you more about Skype. So I would be absolutely, absolutely, I would encourage you to go ahead, download that OneNote, get an editable version of my, uh, my uh, Mystery Skype curriculum. And if you want to check it out without logging or downloading anything, you have to access in a view-only mode. So overall, OneNote Mystery Notebook, uh, uh, notebook will give you a curriculum, which is a great resource for teachers, and that will save your time and make your Mystery Skype games more engaging and more authentic for your students. It's a great activity to do in the class. And this new Skype for web means you might not even need to download Skype on your desktop. Now, what's beautiful about it is that it even gives you the assessment tools. It not only gives you the jobs that the students can have, like you can see on the screen, it gives you what the success criteria of a Skype session is. So what are the features that I can access? Well, all the features that you're accessing right now, you can do instant messaging, you can do voice messaging, you can do audio testing, you can share files, and you can share the screen also. I've done most of that in that session today with you. So Mystery Skype Notebook is a fun teacher-invented learning game that builds students' cultural awareness, critical thinking, and geography skills. And now this one notebook, like I said, is free for you, so get it today. Don't wait. To give you a glimpse of what it looks like, this is what it looks like, uh, one note notebook looks like. What I'm going to share with you now is a project that we did last winter. We were around Christmas, and we designed this project. 
like it tells you that it started in November and went on till December. Actually, it went on way beyond even until January because this was a highly successful project. It was titled Capturing Christmas Across the Globe and it gave teachers a detailed plan of what to um, do during your Chris, uh, Skype call. So here we connected classrooms across the globe where we captured almost all uh, sections of the globe. If you can see, this is an actual map of how many countries were visited during these sessions. Students visited more than 15, I would say more than 18 different countries across 20 sessions, participated in this project, exchanged information on how they celebrate Christmas in their community. Their traditions, celebrations, symbols, food and festivities that mark Christmas for them. And the most beautiful part of it, well, they sang carols in their native language in a very, very traditional way. Giving you a peek into what it looked like, what did the classrooms look like, how did children dress up. Here's a picture which actually captures so many sessions in action. And these are all different schools, different place, placed various um, places in the uh, within our country and these are some of the glimpses from those rooms. Can you see the excitement? Well, with the little older children, the ones that you see in the room now, it turns out to be a nice competition. If you see on the top right picture, children are actually standing on their desks and tables and singing aloud. So this becomes like, you know, I sing to you and you sing to me session. So it's, it's absolutely beautiful. Can you see learning happening in such a meaningful manner? Well, yes. These are the 21st century skills in action. You can find information all about it on our blog, which is learnerholics.wordpress.com, and that's where people started connecting. And there was so much of news on Twitter about it. Everybody was sharing news on Twitter. They were exchanging um, emails. They were writing blogs about it. So this was a very, very talked about project. We used Excel online to connect these classrooms, so we shared a link to this uh, tool with the educators, so they actually scheduled their sessions according to their preference. So that's how basically a whole session works. If you want to schedule a session, all you have to do is look up that OneNote notebook, schedule, uh, find somebody on the website, connect with them, create an Excel sheet within OneNote notebook, to access or to connect or to keep record or track of the Skype sessions that you're doing. And you have a lesson plan on hand. You have your students. You know your topics. So go ahead, think right, left, and center. And think about a topic about which you would like to find a mystery partner. This is the time when I'm waiting for you to type in the chat window how and where and why would you want to use Skype, mystery Skype, in your classroom. So my question again, why would you use Mystery Skype in your classroom? What is your purpose? Do you want to do it for the purpose? Find your purpose the way we found Christmas, capturing Christmas across the globe. There are others who have found environment as one of their focus. And some of them have even found out some very interesting ways of uh, identifying uh, numbers. So it's called a number, mystery numbers. So they actually connect with a math teacher. The uh, host teacher connects with the math teacher and she tells her beforehand, help my students arrive at this number. So it's so exciting that every child is trying to reach to that number through some calculation representing some kind of mathematical uh, calculation to reach that number. So it's, it's, it's absolutely exciting. So it's not only geography, it, it's, it's as vast as, as much as you can think of it to be. So, you know, um, yeah, awesome ideas over there like math games or even science games or, you know, complete this. Um, you know, we, we teach them chemistry equations. We teach them so many more things. We teach them physics experiments. Have we ever thought of having a mystery experiment? Well, Go widen your thinking. Go think beyond the limits of your own school or your classroom. Design mystery Skype that is challenge-based, that is engaging in a way that they have never learned before. While you go back after summer vacations, you should be able to create the excitement that children are looking for in the classrooms. No more dull faces, no more sitting blank faces, but faces who are talking, faces who are engaged, faces who are learning in your classrooms. Uh, yes, Shelly, you're absolutely right. Endless opportunities. 
here are some more which are uh, examples of personalized project based learning um, I'm just going to leave this slide open for you to actually read rather than reading it for you so about half a minute let's say have a go have a read Yes, these are only some of the ideas. These are to start you on thinking. Here's another project. This is a global project, which is uh, which actually runs by a hashtag go to you. So if you're on Twitter, if you type uh, hashtag go to you, you'll be able to find loads and loads and loads of information about it because here teachers believe in co-teaching, co-planning, co-learning, and co-creating and co-presenting. So the goal of uh, who to you is to build many international relationships as each student progresses through their educational journey. Students and teachers are encouraged to document, record, and share all connections they make on Twitter and other social media using who to you hashtag. It's pretty interesting. Here's another project, which is, again, a project that we call out to you. We give you a shout out to join this project. This is that comes by the name Project Okuma, and we need your support to support Project Okuma. This is a project which is being started by MI Fellows to work with schools in the Kakuma refugee camp. This camp hosts about 100 students in one room. And these children, the only access to the outside world for these children is, is, um, is the Skype in the classroom. So uh, I'm just going to pause here and ask Jyoti to talk. Somebody wants to see a previous slide. That's why they were just saying. Okay. Somebody wants to see the previous slide. Here you are. That's a hashtag who to you. Okay, thank you. So we were talking about Project Kakuma. So Kakuma is actually ready for us to Skype with them and we need lots of participation. At this moment of time, I must mention that Vinita work has been absolutely, absolutely outstanding there because she, along with her students, have been connected with students at uh, Kakuma. They have been sharing many, many projects and they worked on robotics and the students of her school, that's SRDAV Delhi, have actually packed a whole package of robotics materials and ship them off to Gokuma. So those are the kind of bonds that you actually saw in the first video. They are they are actually real and they are happening in our own neighborhood. So you know when you see those videos you believe as if you know yeah they can do it. How about me? I'm not too sure. But believe you me this is happening and if Vinita is in the room Vinita would really request you to type in the chat window your experience of working with Gokuma children. Uh, Moses, the Kakuma refugee camp organizer, would like to have three to five Skype calls a week with different classes in Kakuma. So we've given you plenty of ideas. We've thrown at you many, many opportunities. And here in the word of Angela Myers, it creates an opportunity for students to learn from each other, to have authentic audience for their work and to meet others who can further their learning. And I'm sure each and every educator in this room is here to know how to take their students' learning in the near future. Here's a glimpse of all that you can do. And there's, uh, like I said before, much, much, much more that you can do with Skype in the classroom. The world is our classroom. Take them on virtual field trips. Call, Skype, call in Skype guest speakers. Have mystery Skypes in your classrooms. Create collaborative projects. So the world is as wide as only you want it to be. Skype in the classroom. Well, the sound of Skype is like a doorbell. When the world is calling your classroom, open that door. The limits of your four walls will definitely disappear. And I can assure you of that. The room is now open to your questions and queries. And our eyes are completely glued to the chat window. So go ahead, shoot questions, ask us, talk to us because we still have about four to five minutes to go. So here yeah, you're all sitting together and listening. Thanks, Minakshi Shama. That was, that's, that's really nice. So 
we are here to create global citizens that's so 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 true arvin that's so very true Fukuoka is for which grade it could be for any grade that you wanted to be because that room has like i said 100 students packed who are belong to different age groups so there is no no particular uh, class over there so what is the procedure to join kokuma write to us how do we get how do we go for virtual field trips like i showed you on education.microsoft.com uh, that's uh, the edu zone that's your landing page that's a to go page actually just go over there going to skype in the classroom click on it it will give you an option to go for mystery skype or your field trip or anything that you want to jodi could you catch any more question there mm. I'm sorry if you no, missed no, any no, so we are still browsing through your questions please request you to write once again if you have missed no. out no. okay no. gunjan wants us to keep you updated about any community project that our school okay let me tell you at that note that like i said every month skype in the classroom has a different focus in the past we have had read aloud sessions where classes have read aloud to each other we have invited authors so that was almost like a book month that or uh, you know the story uh, read aloud sessions that we have in our schools so those opportunities keep landing over there so please keep an eye on that page it will keep promoting all those right now also if you go over there today is 8th of june and today is the world ocean day so you could uh, actually see many 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 things happening in action how can we use this for chemistry like i said it's only limited to how much you can think about it well, if i were a chemistry teacher i would call guest speakers all the time children are listening to my voice my way of teaching why not call in another teacher who is also a chemistry expert every school has a chemistry teacher so have an educator exchange call them invite them into your classrooms to take a session maybe somebody is an expert and maybe somebody has a lab that maybe in a my school that lab doesn't have that facility but maybe another school or university has that facility i would make a request i would go all there to make a connection bring them into my classrooms i would just see how our other teachers teach i would just call somebody to model teaching chemistry in my class and i hope this is answered your question anjana do we have to install mystery skype no you don't need to install mystery skype like i said on when you click on skype in the classroom you have a landing page over there gentle and you can simply go and click over there find your connection and find your uh link link for twitter rupa what would that be what uh, if you're talking about our link that's a hashtag the pedagogics and hashtag minakshi obroy hashtag sorry at minakshi obroy and at jyoti chaba we also go by a hashtag i go very 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 frequently i go by a hashtag you keep me going and right now i will absolutely immediately after this session tweet to say you keep me going any other questions in the window jyoti <laughs> nothing I see many worries around chemistry. Chemistry is an interesting subject. I've always liked it. How can we use uh, to teach a language? Well, uh, let me tell you. There is a beautiful. Uh, actually, I should play that for you. Let me just uh, fetch that and play that video for you, because uh, what Skype has is something absolutely beautiful. It has a feature. which is called translator and i'm going to end actually that 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 was the plan that i was going to end my session by showing you that video but, but i'm very aware that some of you cannot view the video yet that's actually a video which i will want you all to view because what is beautifully built in into skype is that uh, a translator feature so what you hear on the other side is actually what uh you or the language you choose to hear so that is absolutely beautiful so i'm just going to run that for you to show you what i'm talking about so then jodi do we have any questions lined up no not really i'm also going to talk about uh many many opportunities lined up for you but before that i'm going to share my screen so that you'll be able to view what i'm going to show you 
So, or I still on your chat window, so, so don't worry about it. Sonia uh, also, Sonia Madhav is also talking about new MI program. She wants you to talk. Yes, I will speak about the new MI program. You know, our teachers are very interested to have you on board, and I'm really, really excited to get you on board as well. So let's view this, and I'm going to talk about it. ¿Te encuentras en América del Norte? Yes. Do you live in Central Mexico? Sí. ¿Te encuentras en Estados Unidos de América? Yes. Do you live in a capital city? Sí. ¿Estás cerca de Seattle? We are very close to Seattle. Are you in Mexico City? Sí. ¿Estás en Tacoma? Yes. You're a good guess. Gracias. Thank you. Do you like living in Mexico City? Te gusta vivir en la ciudad de México. Aquí está muy lindo. Here is very nice. What do you do for fun? ¿Qué haces para divertirte? Voy a las playas de México. I'm going to the beaches of Mexico. I like to swim. Me gusta nadar. A mí también. Me too. Where in the world do you wish to travel? ¿A dónde en el mundo te gustaría viajar? A Rusia. To Russia. ¿Tú? And you? Everywhere. <laughs> Sería increíble algún día verte en México. It would be amazing to see you someday in Mexico. I would really like to visit you sometime. Me gustaría mucho visitarte algún día. A mí también. Me too. Wow, did you see the excitement in the class? Did you see the roars of excitement, the roars of learning that was happening in the classroom? But that's what happens when you do a mystery Skype and that too with a country where they don't understand your language. It's an absolute, absolute pleasure. Absolute true. Yeah, so, okay, I hope that answers your question. Language is not a barrier. I see more questions coming in. How to show some live demos? Uh, you need a camera and you need to set up um, in the lab or wherever you are and travel your camera, travel your, uh, with your tablets. You could, you could do anything with so many gadgets and so many options. You could just simply set up a camera in front of you and give a live demo. What about teaching math through Skype? Why not? I talked about uh, Skype number. You could even be talking about a Skype equation. So the math teacher drives that children into finishing the equation which could end in many 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 ways and she, you know you can you can actually start with even a line and start drawing angles and ask them to guess the angles and they wouldn't even know if you were building up a building with angles so you know that is actually taking them learning bringing learning closer to them so why can't we have students acting like solution in a mystery sky and let other students guess the composition absolutely Gunjan, it's only limited to the way you think it's it's actually you can expand it in any direction possible and i see wonderful ideas coming in here so please uh, use each other's ideas this is like really awesome if you can actually do that um any more questions i'm very very conscious of the time and i understand that the time for the session is already up but before we go let me tell you what we have lined up we do have the next session on 10th, which is going to be about OneNote. We're going to talk about how OneNote can be used in the classroom. Apart from that, what is this set of four sessions gearing up to? This is going to lead up to a project. You're expected to design an assignment at the end of the next session. That is the second session. Well, I'm going to repeat that, and I want you to listen carefully. You have to use Skype in the classroom and OneNote together to design a lesson plan 
and share that assignment with us. So that's your assignment. We will be sharing an assignment with you next week uh, on, on sorry on 10th in the next session and you are expected to work on that assignment and submit it to us before our next session which will be on 14th of June. Therefore the deadline for the assignment would be 13th. Only when you submit these assignments and then you'll be given another assignment on 18th along with a project. So then you have a timeline till about 22nd of June to finish your project. By the end of the day, 22nd of June, you must submit your project. Post submission, your projects will be evaluated based on rubrics, which we will be sharing with you beforehand. Next session, we will be sharing all of that with you. Thus, you will have to make a project which will be evaluated based on a rubric, and three top winners will be declared out of that. Post all these four sessions, assignments and project only, will you be given a certification or would you be awarded an award? In case any of this is missing, I'm sorry, but you would not qualify to get an award or a certification. Therefore, please kindly do spread the word about having to attend this session. These sessions are extremely important for you to attend. Do your assignments, submit your assignments in time. You could post them on Yammer. We'll get you the details next time we talk about it. Well, last but not the least, I'm going to talk to you about a huge opportunity that awaits you from Microsoft. Microsoft is right now open to inviting applications for you to become Microsoft Innovative Educator Expert. Towards the beginning of the session, I did mention that Jyoti is a Microsoft Innovative Educator Expert and I'm a Microsoft Innovative Educator Fellow. Well, if you want to embark on this journey, you, all you have to do is apply for it. We are going to share the links uh, for you to apply, how to apply and what to do. All I can tell you right now is if you're on Facebook, go to Facebook, look, for, look up Deep Pedagogics. Uh, Jyoti is typing that in the type window, sorry, chat window. And on the top, we have pinned a video of how to apply for becoming Microsoft Innovative Educator Expert. Well, the window is open to anyone and everyone sitting across the board and within India, if you're applying here, well, please write to us. We, as the Pedagogics, are happy to be your partner in this. We are happy to guide you. There are no costs involved. There is no registration fee. There is no money involved anywhere. Therefore, these are some huge, huge, huge opportunities for you which Microsoft brings to you and these all these programs have been very carefully put together for teachers who are excited about learning, who are absolutely passionate about learning. Therefore, if you are one, please go ahead and apply. And with this, we are almost towards the end of this session. Thank you so much. It's been absolutely, absolutely awesome. It's it's my privilege today to be presenting this to you, to be sharing the, this information with you. And you've been absolutely interesting because you've been typing lots in the chat window. You've kept this session alive. It's not like I'm talking to just a screen, which normally happens in such sessions. Thank you and thank you so much. See you in another two days on 10th of June. Thank you so much for joining everyone. And we are really, really looking forward to having you all back for the rest of the sessions of our summer part shala. And I really love the window chat and chat window. It's really going busy. <laughs> so thank you so much for active participation and see you soon. Before we go, there are no topics for those assignments like you asked. You may choose your own topic because you are the expert of your classroom. You know what your what interests your children the best. We don't want to limit your thinking by giving you topics. Therefore, it's all open for you to design. Next time when we talk about uh, OneNote, I am going to share OneNote, which will have a, no, 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 not really a lesson plan template, but a guidance as to what the plan can look like. So I'll give you a glimpse into what a plan can look like. And I hope that is going to be useful. Thank you. Thank you so much. You actually keep me going. Bye-bye.